Hi guys, how are you? Me? I'm sticking out. Sticking out. Do you know that phrase? That's something that, uh, that we use in Ireland, some people use in Ireland. It means I'm fantastic, I'm really good. Sticking out, I'm sticking out. Anyway, um, so what did we do last time? Okay, yes, we've covered um, some trends, talking about trends, up and down. We've looked at um, the types of variables that we get at IELTS um, in this writing task one. And also we did a little bit on time, and we put those ideas together into sentences, okay? However, if you write sentences with just that information, well, there's actually some information from the graphs or tables missing, okay? And the missing information is basically the statistics, the numbers, okay? So we haven't really talked about numbers yet and how to express these numbers which are in the graphs and in the tables. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at statistical data, expressing these statistics. Okay, and how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about expressing proportions and what proportions are, basically. Then, looking more specifically at numbers themselves. Then we'll look at how to use prepositions um, correctly when we're dealing with these numbers, okay? And we will look at um, using comparative structures, superlative structures, and similarity. Also, um, when we've got all of these ideas together, we need to um, sometimes be a little bit more general, okay? You don't always have to say the exact specific number or proportion. You can approximate it, okay? So it could be approximately something, okay? So we'll look at approximating these proportions and also approximating the numbers. And then another way that things can change, they can change in certain factors, and we call these multiples. For example, if something starts at this level, and then it moves up to exactly two times that level, okay? How are we going to express these multiples, okay? So, let's get down to the nitty-gritty expressing proportions now. So, proportions are generally expressed as percentages, or ratios, so a ratio is basically how many of these you have to the number of these you have, okay? So with fingers, I've got five here, five here, the ratio is one to one, okay? So a ratio tells you about how many are on this side, how many are on that side, and the basic um, form of that number, okay? We'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. And then we'll deal with fractions, another type of proportion. Okay? So, first of all, looking at percentages. Now, <clears throat> in English, um, and, in, and in your language, I'm sure, there are specific ways of writing numbers in the form of percentages. So you've got number plus a symbol, okay? And this might seem fairly obvious to you, but in English, we have the number first. Okay, so let's see some numbers here. Uh, Ten. 36, 87, 1.2, we got another one, and then after the number we put the symbol, okay, in this case it's the percentage symbol. This is slightly different to other symbols like um, money, for example, currency. When we write in pounds, we put the pound sign, the symbol, before the number. With percentages we must put them afterwards. And like I said before, um, some of you might think this is very, very obvious, but there are languages in the world which have the symbol af uh, before, not afterwards, okay? So, so understand what you do in your language. Is it different or the same as what we do in English? But remember, this is a key thing to remember, percentage sign after the number, okay? And how do we say this? Well, 10%, 36%. And 1.2%. We do not say percentage, um, and we do not write percentage. Okay, we write percent. Percentage is used as we saw in the last lesson when we're um, talking about the variable and how it's measured. So the percentage of people, blah blah blah. But when you've got the actual number, we use the word percent afterwards. Okay, that's another common mistake at IELTS. So you must avoid this one as well. Good. Okay, so <clears throat> let's look at some uh, example sentences. We can see a slight recovery.